Shalom. This video is about Parshat Mishpatim, which is Exodus 21 through chapter 24, 18. It follows right on the heels of Parshat Yitro, which is the giving of the Ten Commandments. So what would you have after the Ten Commandments? Well, you have lots and lots and lots of laws. According to Jewish tradition, the word Mishpatim is actually based on the Hebrew root of Shofet, or judge, so it means judgments. In Jewish tradition, generally distinguished between commandments that are Mishpatim, it can be rationally understood in those mishpatim, and those uh, mitzvot that are chukim, that maybe not have a rational basis. Of course, as I explained in my video on Saja, he divided them, called them different names, but he, he also said there were some mitzvot that were not rational in their basis, but just ceremonies and rituals. But of course, there have been efforts to understand them all. Anyway, now, what's in this portion? Many mitzvot. It begins by talking about the troubling institution of slavery. And slaves were not mistreated like they were today. They were mostly indentured servants, and there were all kinds of rules regulating how uh, decently you had to treat them, since the reminder was that Jews were, were slaves in the land of Egypt. <clears throat> then it goes into certain crimes that are punishable by death. In case you're interested in exploring this further, you might see my video on capital punishment, death penalty, and Jewish tradition. Among them are murder and kidnapping. Then it talks about all the things that a goring ox does and all the culpability. Uh, first, I just saw in the paper last week a story in another country about a goring ox. And actually, it reminded me of the laws in the Talmud here in the Torah about goring oxes. But the, this idea of the goring ox is the basis in several tractates of the Talmud about tort law and negligence and give us the basis of American common law and um, English common law and how you deal with things that when so, when somebody hurt, causes property damage to someone else. Uh, then there are rules and penalties for theft and lending. Uh, and then there are certain laws pertaining to Israel remaining a holy people. Among those are reminders not to curse God and to dedicate God's firstborn sons to uh, and the first fruits of the tree. There are other laws pertaining to holiness that add to the kosher laws, like uh, not eating flesh torn by a wild beast, which is called nevela, and torn, a torn trafe, now means anything that's not kosher, but originally it was this f stuff that was torn by a wild beast. And it's, again, it has the verse that occurs three times in the Torah, once here, don't cook a kid in the mother's milk, which gives us the basis of the prohibition on milk, mixing milk and meat. And if you're more interested in that more, see my video on meat and milk. Uh, then it talks about the sabbatical year and how the land has to lie fallow. Uh, this year, 5768, is a sabbatical year in Israel, and they still observe it. There's all kinds of rules about what you can and cannot grow to let the land rest also. Uh, and the commandment to rest on the seventh day follows. Again, reminding us about the sequence of seven, how you're supposed to rest. And then there's another reference to the three pilgrimage festivals and that how all males are supposed to present themselves before God at these times. We read all the time about the Hajj, the big Islamic pilgrimage to Mecca every year. People try and do well. It's based on this Jewish pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the three festivals. Christians know this probably from uh, Jesus being at the temple during um, the holiday, uh, one of the holidays. And actually, scholars of ancient Israel say that the population of Jerusalem used to swell significantly during this period, indicating that people actually would come. We also have the famous eye for an eye statement, which has been totally misunderstood by anti-Semites. It never meant that you take somebody's eye for somebody's eye, but rather it was the establishment of the basis of American common law of monetary compensation. And then the reminder that people are not to mistreat strangers, widows, and orphans in their midst, because we were strangers in the land of Egypt. And that is, that is repeated 36 times in the Torah. No other culture has this notion that early of treating everybody equally and not oppressing the stranger. And then the portion concludes by Moses repeating all the rules to the people and writes them down. Uh, the mountain is covered with the presence of God for six days. On the seventh day, God tells Moses to ascend the mountain. Moses goes up and remains there the 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, and if you think about the broad range here, you cover nearly every aspect of human life. Uh, Ibn Ezra, one of the great medieval commentaries, notes the focus upon the just treatment of the most vulnerable members of the society, slaves, borrowers, minors, resident aliens, widows and orphans. Um, very important to note that. Um, also, you might want to see my video on women 
uh, rights in Jewish law because the idea here that the Torah says in 2317, three times a year will the males appear before God is one of the scriptural bases for saying that women are not obligated to commandments that are time-bound, which then creates a lot of the uh, differentiation in Orthodox Judaism about what women can and cannot do. Uh, so there we have it, this uh, very important portion. They're not the Ten Commandments granted, but they're very important commandments. There's many of them. And it just shows you that there aren't just Ten Commandments in the world, but there are actually many commandments uh, in the Torah that have to be carefully considered as the foundations of Judaism. And Parshat Mishpatim, with its uh, judgments and rules, is uh, certainly worth uh, reading and understanding.